So the first question that I have today is from Lutando Nyawose. And Lutando sent me two questions. And the first question that Lutando sent, so I just wrote it down on the, uh, on the screen, it says, how can we monitor the rate of a reaction? Now remember, when we talk about rates of reactions, so we are using ingredients or reactants, and these reactants need to be used up so that we can make something else, right? If you want to bake a birthday cake, you buy the ingredients, you buy the eggs, you buy the baking powder, you, you buy all these things. But now when you start mixing the eggs and the milk and so forth, you are using all of this up and then you are actually making a cake. So when this, when we start using this and it gets less and less and less, cakes become more and more and more. So when you're thinking about the reaction rate or how do we monitor it, something must be used up because something is being made. Already that's the line of thinking. But I'm going to tell you now how you can actually say this. So this is what the examiner is looking for. So with Lutano, how can we monitor the rate of the reaction? The first way in which we can monitor, I'm going to do this in point form. So I can say um, for the first one, it is changes in the concentration, in the concentration, it is changes in the concentration of the reactants, of the reactants and products. Of products. Now remember, when you are using the formula to calculate the rate of a reaction, it is the concentration of your reactants and products. So the change in concentration of products and reactants all over time. So make sure that you have concentration. But another way we can monitor this is when we talk about the change in mass. We can also say it is the changes in the mass. Remember when something is being used up, something else must be made. So the mass, changes of mass of the concentration, mass of concentration, I'm, I can't multitask, mass of the reactants, actants, mass of the reactants or products, or the products. Another way you can say it is changes in volume. Because this means if you have, let's say, you have one liter of something and you're trying to make something else and you, are keep, you keep adding this and you're adding that and you're adding that to actually get a product, it means that the volume can then change. It can either get more or it can then get less. Now remember, if you have gas that's also evaporating and so forth, that can also change the volume. So when we are monitoring the rate of reaction, we can also check the volume that is actually changing. Oh, there was more here, but there was less here. There is a change in that reaction. So you can also say changes in the volume. Here's a changes in the volume, changes in the volume of the reaction, of the reactant, rather, of the reactant or products. And then the last one, we can then say, or say, the rate, the rate of reaction the rate of reaction can be observed observed by watching by watching the disappearance appearance of a reactant and this is what i said that one will actually be used up in this case, they just say disappear. The disappearing of reactant or the appearance. And remember, when you are using up something, something else must appear. The appearance, the appearance of a product, of a product. Now, product, this happens over time, over time. And I like, I like, I like Lutando's question because when you are looking at how you monitor the rate of reaction, the examiner can actually give you a graph. And from the graph, they can ask you, oh, between A and B, which one happened quicker? So you already need to know, oh, this is where the product started and this is when the reactants were used. These are so many reactants that were put into a, a reaction and so forth. So they can either ask you in a question form to actually say, how do we monitor it? or give you a graph and ask you questions based on that graph. So the important thing that you need to know is to know that if you start with a certain number of products, you're going to, of reactants, you have to have a certain number of products, right? We use this up, 
to form something else. So technically, when you have reactants, you have no products initially. And at the end point, you can have some reactants because not all the things are used up. Something can be an excess, something can be a limiting reagent. And then you can have products at the end. So that's what the examiner wants to see, whether in writing form or they can give you a graph and then you need to analyze the graph yourself. So the next question that Lutando sent me, he says, explain in one sentence what is meant by the reaction rate? Now, Lutando, there's not really one sentence in which we can explain because it means we have to talk about our reactants that are being used up, that are being consumed, that are disappearing, and then we have to talk about our products that are actually appearing, that are being made, that are being formed, and this happens over a period of time. But now, you know, you can speak it as a story and so forth, but in chemistry, you need to have, use the correct lingo. Remember, everything has its own genre, so we have to use the correct wording so that when the examiner is mocking, they know exactly what they're doing. So explain in one sentence what is meant by the reaction rate. According to Luptan, they didn't say define reaction rate, they just said explain. I would say, I would say it is the speed at which, because remember, we are talking about reaction rate at which a chemical reaction. Now, when we talk about a chemical reaction, we're talking about products, reactants, and stuff, a, a, way, a chemical reaction proceeds, proceeds, this is what it means, the speed at which a chemical reaction proceeds, however, it is often, it is often expressed, it is often expressed in terms, terms of either, now, it is important how we express it because it is important to know that we're talking about concentration, volume, and so forth. Concentration. And I'm just going to put you in brackets, amount per unit time. And that is the concentration of it. And remember, concentration in the reaction rate is very important because when we increase concentration, we increase the rate of a reaction because more collisions take place of a product, so the concentration amount per unit time of a product, product that is formed, remember products are formed while reactants are being used up in a unit time, and it is true because products, the reaction rate means that products can be formed at a reaction rate. Let me just elaborate this a little bit more. When we talk about the rate of a reaction, rate means time, how quick or how slow something can happen. So even though we are forming products, it's important at, at the time or the rate at which we can form products. For an example, let's say me and Bali both have a bakery, but because Bali is so lazy, Bali takes, she takes maybe four hours to bake 12 muffins, where I take 30 minutes to bake 12 muffins. So it means that Bali's reaction rate is a little bit faster, even though at the end we have the same products, but Bali's reaction rate or rate of baking muffins is a little bit slower than mine, and mine is much more quicker than Bali's. So you have to take into consideration that we're talking about the concentration, the volume, the mass at a rate of time that is being used up or that it is formed, even though it's a reaction rate, but the rate is a very specific in terms of time. So it is a product that is formed in a unit time, or the concentration, and this is a very long sentence, concentration, but I'm actually trying to get everything in, so the examiner is very happy with your answer, of a reactant, of a reactant that is consumed, consumed in a unit, in a unit time. Now something else that I like doing, I just want to make an area here, I like using formula. So I can say the rate of a reaction is equal to the change, this is delta meaning change, we can say the change in product, product, product or I'm going to say reactant, tint all over 
change in time. Let me just use a different color. So the rate of any reaction is the rate of how the products are being made or how the reactants are being used up or consumed at a unit of time. So if ever you feel like you're forgetting anything, whether in chemistry or whether in physics, always go back to your formulas. And by just mere looking at the formulas, you are then able to actually elaborate on what's, say, on, on what's actually being said. Because the examiners, even though they do give you the formula, they will always ask, please define or please explain. But all of these answers are actually coming from the formulas in which you're given. So my darlings, like how I always say, all your answers are actually in your question paper. You just need to read and analyze what is given and then you are able to find your answer. Thank <laughs> you.